When you switch to sliders in the color panel in Affinity Photo, you get this lock icon. Ever wondered what does the lock button do? Does it lock the slider or the selected color? Turning it on and off seems to have no effect. I can switch to another slider or still can change colors. So what does it do exactly? Well, it locks the current slider. But to understand how the locking works, we need to understand the default behavior in Affinity. By default, the lock is turned off and I will create a couple of objects to explain what the default behavior is. Let me start by creating a box and set its color to red using the RGB slider. I will create another box and this time I will set its color using the HSL slider. And a final box where I will use the CMIK slider to set its color. Notice that our slider is now at CMIK. Now let's select the first box. Notice how the slider has changed to RGB. If I select the second box, it switches to HSL. Pretty cool, isn't it? Affinity remembers the color slider you have used with an object and switches to it when the object is selected. This is the default behavior I was referring to. You might now guess what will happen when we enable the lock button. Selecting an object will no longer switch to the associated color slider, but will lock the current active slider. Notice now when I'm selecting different boxes, the slider stays in CMIK. By the way, the color slider is also remembered for gradient points. If I change the second box to have gradient with three points and make sure that each point uses a different slider, I can switch to another object, but when I come back, notice how the three points are changing the color slider. This also works for fill layers. The color slider used to set the fill layer will be remembered. In this case, I will use the lab slider. When we deselect and select back the fill layer, notice how the color slider changes back to lab. So with the lock enabled, we can force to have the color slider to always use the current selected mode when switching between objects. Another important reason why the lock can be useful is to make sure that the colors are not converted when switching sliders. Let me show you what I mean. I will add a box and set its color to red with the RGB slider. If I switch to the CMIK slider and the lock is not enabled, we get the red color in CMIK. Let's switch back to RGB and notice how our RGB values have been updated. I will explain in a minute why this happened, but let's set the color back to pure red and enable the lock. I can switch to CMIK. As before, it shows the correct CMIK value for red. If I switch back to RGB, notice how our RGB value has not changed this time. So why does the RGB color slider change when switching back from CMIK? Well, this has to do with the gamut, or in simple words, the range of which CMIK can show colors. From all the colors we can see, which is also referred as the visible spectrum, CMIK can only show a smaller subset, which is the dotted area. Notice how the area of the RGB is much larger. So the pure red we see in CMIK will not be considered pure red in RGB, as RGB has a better representation for red than CMIK. You could say that the RGB color model has a better precision and range in representing the colors. Where the CMIK model reaches its limit, RGB has still some space left before the limit is reached. The color sliders in Affinity live in their own gamut and if the slider is not locked, changing the slider will convert it to the selected color model gamut. 
Actually, you might have noticed that the document I was using was in CMYK color space. This is why you could not see any changes in color when switching between RGB and CMYK value changes. Let me switch to the sRGB color space. Notice now how the spectrum image got brighter outside the CMYK area. The box is now in pure red. When I switch to CMYK without the lock, notice how the color is dimmed down, which indicates it was converted to the max red value in the CMYK color space. But as the document is now in sRGB, it gets the corresponding RGB value in the document and we see the difference. The lock button can be useful in these cases to make sure you accidentally don't lose your original color, which can be especially useful when switching between color spaces. I hope this video clarified the use of the lock button. And as always, thank you for watching.